Hi, today we're going to see how to use artificial intelligences to help us in our projects. This is a very exciting technology that has come a long way in recent years and its ability to generate illustrations is one of its most impressive applications. Before I start, I have to say that all images in this tutorial have been generated using only prompts from public domain artists and galleries that the AIs have in their database. You will see, even so, the results we can obtain are magnificent. During this tutorial, we'll look at the different ways to use AIs and I will tell you which processes I recommend the most or which I think are the most successful. It's also important to be aware of the ethical and legal aspects of using AIs to generate art and be transparent about their use in your work. Be clear about how you've used these tools to create your art. So, if we ask for the person in the portrait to have red hair, it's able to understand where in the portrait the hair is, what colour it should be and how light the colour should be. We can ask for the person in the portrait to have blue hair, be wearing glasses and to have a bird's nest. And the AI knows how to create these elements on the canvas and give them light and colour without mistakes. Thanks to Cartoon Animator 5, these beautiful illustrations and designs can be brought to life to tell the stories you never thought you could accomplish in a quick and easy way. In this tutorial, I will give you advice that can be useful both now and in the future, but I recommend you understand the use of AI in your projects. Let's start with the simplest way and the one I recommend the least. You can easily find websites where there is an AI that generates art procedurally as Waifu Labs. The result it gives us, in this case a generic anime style, can't be controlled, limiting us almost entirely to selecting the best of the options. AI, which allows you to draw the character you want by hand, giving an identical result. But if we want to make this topic more interesting, we have to learn what prompts are. The secret to getting the images we want is to give the AI a good prompt. Roughly speaking, when we use an AI image generator and click on the Generate button, the AI starts by creating a canvas full of multicolored noise. Next, the AI will recognize the concepts we have written as prompts, recognize their shapes, their color, and how light affects them. Then, two subcomponents will enter a generative network and an evaluation network. The generative network is the one in charge of generating images, while the evaluation network is the one that determines whether the images created are good or bad in some sense. To understand it simply, you see how the image gradually takes shape. What you are seeing is the fight between the generative network that tries to convince the other network that the last image it has generated is a perfect robot. What is important is that we start with the most important features of the image, as these are the ones that the AI will take into account the most. Let's put this into practice with the AI that I consider is the simplest you can use and the best results you can get, mid-journey. We do this because this particular AI works through commands in Discord. Now that we're inside, we can quickly create a private server to run the AI, although this is optional. To be able to use the AI on our private server, we have to click on the logo, click on Profile in the drop-down menu and click on the Add to Server button. When we enter our server, we will see a notification at the bottom confirming that Midjourney bot is active. To start using it, we only have to type the forward slash key and see the options that appear in the pop-up window. We must click on the first option, forward slash imagine, which is accompanied by the AI logo. After doing this, we can start writing the prompts to generate the image we want. The beauty of Midjourney is that it produces great results with only three or four words. However, you can only generate a limited number of images free of charge. When writing prompts, it's best to try and get the AI to use only the public domain images that it has in its database. In the future, it's possible that all images used by AIs will be free for public use, but for now, we can try the following suggestions. Put the name of an author whose works are already in the public domain is a good start. These authors have high quality digitised work. Consulting pages like this one can help us to get an idea of what we can get. I will put the name of the website Free Pick along with the words Free Licence and Public Domain. And finally, let's type at the end of the text V4. This will give us access to the latest version of this AI at the time this tutorial was created. We will see that they're not very good. By activating the fourth version at the end of the prompt, we see that the resulting illustrations are larger, more detailed, nicer and more defined 
This result can still be improved. We'll see now. We'll see that the result will appear. Four images and a small menu beneath. I'm going to click on the second button. I'm asking the AI to improve and enlarge the second of the images it's generated. As you can see, this last result is much better. We can still use a method that will give us more control and, consequently, we'll get a better result. This is using the image to image technique. If, for example, we give it a sketch with the concepts we want our illustration to have, we can give them to the AI to generate images similar to our sketch. For the character creation process, you can also use an AI. I like to put a few figures in the Art Breeder AI and ask it to quickly generate a few concept characters. To give the image to the AI, we can click on the plus button in Discord and upload our image. After publishing it, we must open it and then copy its URL address. Again, we will write forward slash imagine, but in this case we will paste the address of the image to be used as a reference. After this, we put the prompts we want to use and press enter. The first of the results has surprised me quite a lot and it looks quite similar to what I had in mind for the character when we made the sketch. I love the final result, that I will animate the character in CTA. Let's leave mid-journey aside, but before I remind you that if you type forward slash info, you can know how many images you can generate for free before you have to pay for them. As mentioned, the character needs several retouches. The most important, without a doubt, is that he's missing his hands and legs. For this, we're going to discover the AI community Hugging Face, AIs that can be used for free in the browser. One of these AIs is Stable Diffusion Infinity, and it will allow us to enlarge our images quite precisely. First, we need to know how to use the AI on which it is based, Stable Diffusion. This AI, developed by Stability AI, is open source and completely free of charge. This has resulted in a myriad of tools that use and improve the AI and that can help us solve many problems that we will see throughout the video. But to use it, you have to keep in mind a couple of things. This AI is my favourite and I use it almost exclusively because it's more accurate. But for that, it needs a lot of prompts. The more prompts you give it, the better the final result and the closer the image will be to the result you are looking for. You can see the huge difference in quality between the one result and another. I always recommend adding prompts like HD, 4K, high definition and well lit. Let's continue where we left off. Let's get some legs for our character. To do this, we can go to Stable Diffusion Infinity in Hugging Face and we will upload our image to the canvas. After confirming the size of the image in the canvas, we can place and transform the creation area to tell the AI where we want to enlarge the image. Remember that you have to put a good part of the creation area inside the image itself so that the AI understands and can continue the image in a coherent way. As you can see in this case, I've made the mistake of not giving enough space to the AI to do a good job with the legs. But since I'm going to edit the illustration by hand, now we're going to take everything generated to Clip Studio for editing. Remember the anime style face at the beginning. I'm going to correct it by hand and use it as an example to show these other canvas enlargement techniques. But for this we're going to need to enlarge the resolution of the canvas using AI. Enlarging this old photograph shows a poor resolution. If we use it as a base to generate another image in Stable Diffusion UI, we'll see that despite having asked for a higher resolution, the result is still poor quality. But in this case, we introduce the face file into an image application like GFP GAN from Hugging Face. We can see that the result of the enlargement is almost magical. Now let's go back to Stable Diffusion and do the same procedure. The difference is obvious. Returning to the anime style example, let's go to Photoshop and use one of the Adobe's AIs. We'll use the one called Neural Filters. If we open the Filters menu and click on the sub-menu with this name, inside we'll find a lot of options to apply to the image. We only need to activate the Super Zoom option. You will see that the result is very good, although there are paid AIs that make better quality line drawing enlargements. Now we're going to enlarge the canvas to give Photoshop space, and we're going to open a plugin to enlarge the drawing. But the one we're going to use is called Get Alpaca. It works in the same way as the previous example. After having opened the floating window of the plugin, we click on the Fill menu. 
This will open a window in which we can choose the template, which in this case will be manga and the prompts. The result is more or less good, but since we're in Photoshop, we're going to work hand in hand with the AI. For example, if we wanted to animate this character, it would not be advisable to have crossed arms. In this case, I can delete that part of the image to give me more options and continue editing the illustration to obtain a character that can be used in CTA. But let's go back to the illustration we were making. I'm going to retouch it in Clip Studio to make it look like the character I have in mind. In this aspect, I recommend painting directly on top of the illustration you generate to make it your own. This is vital if you're going to do a project with more than one character, since it's necessary that the characters all belong to the same style. Personally, I think it is best to remove the face and remake it separately. That way, all the faces have our style and we will be able to animate them better in CTA. When we've finished with a character, it's time to go to the Cartoon Animator 5 website and download the free templates to animate our character. If we open them, we can see that they work by separating the joints of the body by layers and introducing them inside folders. Let's do the same with our character and separate its parts. In this case, being a flat colour design with no line, we're going to take advantage of the fact that CTA allows us to import vector images and when we're done with the separation, we're going to go to Illustrator. Here we're going to automatically vectorize the illustration. If we select our imported artwork, we will see that the image tracing menu options are activated. Remember to activate the preview option to make a clear view of the final result. When we're satisfied with the result, we will click on the expand button to obtain our vectorized version of the image. Next, we're going to remove the background color of the illustration and perfect some finishes of the illustration. Now to customise the part I like the most, facial features. Normally, the elements that make up the face of the character generated with the AI will not be ideal for CTA. To solve this, I'm going to redo these elements and I'm going to use them to customise the face. I will redo the eyelashes or the nose, but we must pay special attention to the pupils so that they are functional and also the scene we will use to mask for the pupils. While doing this, I've been placing the different parts of the character in the template that we have downloaded previously. Keep in mind that you must save each member in its corresponding folder. Finally, we have to place the points which will generate the skeleton in its corresponding place. This AI is complicated to use and you'll probably not get the desired result at first, but we can go further than with the rest of the AIs. You already know the text boxes to write positive and native prompts, but just below you have the image to image option. To take advantage of these options and many others, which we're now going to see, this version of the AI allows us to select a large number of image sizes. Thanks to this, for example, I can create the perfect size background for my character and easily insert it into CTA. I'm going to ask it to generate the necessary elements to set up my own scene. To do this, I make a first sketch in Clip Studio thinking about the animations that the character will perform and its proportion with the scenery. I have separated and corrected the elements that Stable Diffusion has given me and I've vectorized them as I did with the character. Now, as you can see, it's very easy to assemble the scenery in a program like Illustrator from which I will also export the scenery in SVG. Thanks to the fact that CTA can work with vector images, we can get an exceptional quality when we render the final file at 4K. I recommend rendering images with a medium size very small sizes have poor quality and as a consequence the AI makes more mistakes. I also do not recommend larger sizes since the AI seem to be overwhelmed by having to fill so much space with information. Back to the subject. If we select a canvas size and click on the draw button, we can make a quick sketch where we'll determine the colour and the spaces that will occupy the elements that will appear in the image. To have full control over the result, we need to see one more parameter in the prompt strength. When we add an image or sketch as a starting point for stable diffusion, we will see this new slider appear that will control how much the AI takes this starting image into account. To get a result, we must start counting from number four, but stable diffusion needs a little more freedom to be able to implement the prompts we've written and give good results. In general, I recommend you move between four a 6 or an 8 to get the best results. Also note that if you want to keep the direction of illumination in your reference image, 
you cannot exceed a value of 7. This working method will be very useful if we have sketches of all our characters and we want to give them all the same finish or we want to explore new versions of our designs. This can also be very useful if we have iClone to assemble our own scenarios and we want to improve our renders. In this way, we can even reach new heights of hyperrealism that we could only dream of having before with very little effort. This is the case, for example, of 2D to 3D emoji. With this model incorporated and activated by means of the keywords written into the prompt section, we can achieve that flat logo's perfect volume. If we take one of those characters designed with flat colours, we can give it, with this technique, a fantastic volume. If you also use Character Creator, you can take full advantage of Stable Diffusion UI. I'm going to take a character from the Where Besties package that you can get in the Reillusion store. If we use the Browse button, we can use a render of one of our 3D characters as a base. If we then click on the In Paint button, a floating window will pop up in which we can paint as a selection the area we want the AI to render. As you can see, the result of rendering by zones is fantastic. If we click on the first one, called User's Input, this render will replace the reference image. In this way, we can gradually add modifications to the illustration. With this technique, we can have great control over our design and look for the variations we want. But let's finish animating our project. I've introduced the character in CTA 5. I've added the spring effect to his ponytail. And finally, I've added the scenery. To animate the character walking in perspective on the stage, I only have to change its size at the beginning and at the end of the animation. As you can see, integrating the character and background is really easy thanks to these intuitive tools. Typically, this is done using a process called motion capture, or mocap which involves recording the movement of live actors and then using that data to drive the animation of a 3D character. AI can assist in this process by automatically detecting and tracking the movement of the actors in a video and then mapping that motion onto a 3D model. Once the motion has been extracted, it can be processed and refined to ensure that it meets the desired criteria for animation. This might involve adjusting the speed or timing of the motion, smoothing out any jagged or uneven movements, or removing any unwanted noise. The final result is a set of motion data that can be used to control the movement and behaviour of a 3D character in a virtual environment. In this case, thanks to CTA technology, we could convert this 3D movement into 2D in a very simple way. In the animation, my character has to open a locker. For this, when importing the stage, I also imported the empty locker and the door. Thanks to the FFD editor, I can make a graphic element, in this case the door of the ticket office, and make an animation that deforms it with perspective. In this way, I can get a simulation of the door opening. Adding animated elements within the scene will almost always be a good idea as it will bring the world our character inhabits to life. In traditional 2D animation, backgrounds are often drawn larger than the final scene to allow for camera movement and make panning shots smoother. By having a larger background, animators can pan the camera across the scene and maintain a continuous image rather than having to redraw the entire background for each shot. This technique also allows for more flexibility in the final compositing process, where the scene can be cropped and reframed as needed. And finally, I can't finish this tutorial without talking about the large library of movements that CTA has. The ones I like to use the most are the 3D movements because with them I can control very precisely the resulting animation in the 2D plane. Obviously, once we have the animation chosen and correctly placed on the timeline, we have to tweak the result. In this case, not only do we have to adjust the times in which the character reacts to the strange phenomenon happening inside the locker, we also have to adjust the movement to match its emotions. Understanding what the character is feeling at any given moment is really vital for the animation to be understandable, and that's why we can't let this issue be solved with the default animation. Here you have the final result, as you have seen. It's never been so quick and easy to make a 2D animation project. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Reillusion's channel so that you don't miss tutorials like these.